And today, uh, Dr. Uh, John Senyan is touching on a very important topic, doing everything with diligence. That to me um, is music to my ears because as the one who employs you or who is in, uh, who, who, uh, who um, is overall and uh, has oversight of, of everybody, if everybody does works diligently, then uh, yes, uh, ICRA will uh, achieve its objectives and its aims. And not only that, um, the purpose will come to school at ICRA so that we can be employed or that we can even employ others. And so if we can all work diligently, then uh, this world will be a better place. I took some time to look up the word diligently and um, of course, Dr. Senyon may give it uh, uh, many other flavors, but I think things like working carefully, persistently, uh, with zeal or energy, and also conclusively, in other words, that you conclude what you began, the task which you are given. So um, we are all ears to see how can we do this. Uh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for yet another opportunity to learn uh, from you as you speak through the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyu. We want to pray, Lord, that uh, <clears throat> you may anoint him fully with your Holy Spirit, that you may, you yourself will uh, impart uh, your thoughts and your words um, um, in him so that whatever he says, Lord, will be from you. Uh, we want to pray that we may be attentive and that we may be able to put into practice these things so that we may be diligent workers. We pray that, uh, yes, we may keep order, that we may mute our microphones and, um, and only unmute them when we are supposed to. We pray that uh, uh, our gadgets will work well and that the internet will hold, that we shall have a, a, a useful and enjoyable seminar. We pray that as many people as are supposed to join will join on, yes, and that um, uh, the whole of the institution will gain uh, from this very important topic, working, doing everything diligently. We are praying all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Reverend Dr. Uh, John Senyonyi, the Reverend Colonel Dr. John Senyonyi, you're welcome uh, to take uh, center stage. And um, mm -hmm. yes, and talk to us about this very important topic. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kawoya. Um, as you have already been told, uh, my wife is also on. And uh, uh, so we are very thankful for yet another opportunity to be with you. I always smile a little bit when I see you, Professor Kawoya, seated against the wall. And you know the English saying that you've been pushed against the wall, but I hope Ekure is not doing that to you. Uh, <laughs> well, that's a joke, but um, we are thankful that we can be here. And of course, also the Dean who is away, but able to log in. And each and every one of you, we are thankful for the opportunity to share with you. The topic for today, as you see, is um, doing all with the diligence. Doing all with the diligence. Now, uh, I'm glad that Professor Kawoya has already noted the importance of this particular topic. Why are we dealing with the diligence? And I say here that the, there is a tendency to work half-heartedly in Africa. One of the things I've noted very often when I enter someone's house, I enter a building, is notice how the corners, just look at how the corners and how the different uh, parts of the house were finished. And, uh, you know, in most cases, very unfortunately, in most cases, I do find that in the end, the finishing looks like they were going to come back. Or oh, you may even take the work when I was in a position of leadership, 
When someone brings you what they do, what they have done, and you wonder how much thought has they, have they put in, how much effort have they put into all this? Sometimes you really marvel at that. Now, I put a question here, who do you serve? Noting that the one you serve is the one that determines what you actually present and how much diligence or how much effort or how much zeal you put into it. And there is this quotation, which is in Malachi chapter one, where it told, you know, God is having a conversation with the children of Israel. I don't need to read all of it. You'll get it in the notes later. But God is not happy with their offer of sacrifices. And down in verse eight, around here, you can see what he says, when you offer blind animals in sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Now listen to how he ends it. Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor? Says the Lord of hosts. That is really just to point out that who you serve determines how you do and what kind of attitude you bring to everything you do. Now, as you, as you will be hearing me speak, I'll be bringing this down to the student life or to the person who is working. And we need to ask ourselves, who are you serving in what you're doing? Take, for example, if the president here or the Kabaka of Uganda, who is our king here in Uganda, if I was going to take something as a gift to any of them, how much thought would I put in it? How much effort would I put in it? How much energy? Now, all of that has to do with the diligence. All of that has to do with the diligence. How am I going to present myself? So, I don't need to spend too much time on this, but just to show you, Scripture speaks a lot. Even those verses that I put there are not all the verses that concern diligence in the Bible. And I will be going on to a few others. But we even have examples of diligence. Like, for example, Moses, and I just want to say something about that. Moses had just been given the Ten Commandments by God. And then God told him, the people have adulterated themselves by making a God for themselves. Moses comes down with the stones, if you've read the Bible. And when he reaches down there and he sees the idol they had made, he is infuriated. And he throws the stones. That is the zeal for the Lord that had captured him. Or Phineas. In this case, again, people had uh, done something terrible. And in this particular case, there was a man who had gone out with a heathen woman. And Phineas, who was from the priestly family, takes a spear enters his heart and pierces both of them. And God commends him for his zeal because he was stamping out the wrong things that were beginning to creep among the children of Israel. Well, you can, you can read all the others from Ezra and from Nehemiah, the whole book of Nehemiah. But let's just look at a sample of some verses that refer to diligence using different words. Proverbs says the hand of the diligent makes rich. In other words, you work hard, you become rich, you're successful. He also says whoever is slothful. Now, if you don't know what that word slothful, that word slothful means whoever is lazy will not roast his game. In other words, he can kill an animal and fail to cook it for himself. But the diligent man will get precious wealth. Again, in Proverbs, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. 
And then we also hear Paul himself testifying in Acts. In all things I've shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. Now I want you to note there, working hard, not so much to enrich himself, but to help the weak. And in Romans, again, he writes and says, the one who leads, that if you're a leader, do it with zeal. And again, Romans, he, he commends Mary, and there's another one also commended there, who has worked hard for you. In Ephesians, he talks about bond servants or slaves. These were not people doing, commend, you know, work that you would want to do because they were like property that could be dispensed of. But then he says to them, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, because he's talking to Christian bond servants. And then he says, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ. And I want to tell you that sincerity of heart has to do with diligence. So Timothy, he says, it is the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. And then Peter also talks about loving one another earnestly, loving one another earnestly. Now, the point is, in, in Proverbs, diligence is contrasted with the slackness of hand. Or we could even say hasty actions. You know, it's not, you know, it's, he's not saying that we should be imprudent in the things that we do and just work very fast. In Deuteronomy, we read, and those verses that I give you here from Joshua and Acts and Ephesians, he talks about with all, do what you're doing with all your heart. All your heart. In other words, biblical diligence is wholehearted service. It's not half-hearted. It means that whatever you're doing, whether it's work or it's study or whatever, do it with all your energy. And uh, earlier on, we made reference to Proverbs. The slothful will not roast the meat taken in hunting, while the diligent will come to wealth. Now, let's look at a number of words. And I just collected here so many words, and I'm not going to read through all of them. I'll just read a few of them. And what I want is for you to consider if you can identify synonyms, in other words, words of the same meaning and characteristics of the word diligence. There is sincerity, there is indifference, assiduity, which really refers to devotion or single-heartedness. There is wholehearted, there is half-hearted, there is resolute, hardworking, negligence, zealous, laissez-faire, earnestness, inactivity, alertness. And you could go on and on. I don't want to spend too much time on that. But you can see all those words and you can pick out those that are synonyms and offer you the characteristics of a diligent person. Let's look now. I'm now showing you here, those words in black are the words that are synonyms or characteristics of diligence. Those in black, like sincerity, as duty or devotion, wholeheartedness, resolute, hardworking, zealous, earnestness, alertness, eagerness, intensity, vigor, care, exertion, heedfulness, industrious, keenness, tenacity, determination, persistence, steadfast, excellence, patience. Now, the animal that you see here on the right, and I just wanted to show it to you, that animal is called the sloth. And why? Because that animal making just one little movement is such a slow process. It's an amazingly lazy, or is considered to be a very, very lazy animal. That is the sloth. So what we are talking about here, the attributes of diligence, and I've already read through them, so I don't need to do it again. 
Now, those words that you see there in black, on the other hand, a person who is not diligent will show inactivity, half-heartedness, indolence, laziness, lazy fare, carelessness, idleness, inattention, negligence, indifference, procrastination, and more. And I'm not saying that I have exhausted all of them, but that just gives you some picture of what is actually happening with diligence. I also show you here a table. And when you get the notes of this, because I'm going to send them to you, I want you to take them and score yourself from very poor to excellent. For example, sincerity. You know, if you're really doing something with a sincere heart, if you know that you are doing very poorly, maybe you'll give yourself a one or a two or a three. But if you know that you're doing very well, then you'll probably be on the other end of that scale. So you can give yourself scores on all that until in the end, uh, you, you, you give yourself a score. And the total at the bottom will help you to understand if you have passed. So you ask me, what is the pass mark? The pass mark should actually be 80%. 80%. However, I'm not so concerned about the pass mark. I'm more concerned about if you find yourself below 80, identify those areas in your life where you're doing poorly. Because all these are just elements of your character and how you approach what you do. If you're not sincere, then you need to ask yourself, why am I this bad? Can I do better? That's essentially what I'm talking about. If you are not intense about what you do. Now, all of these have just taken those which I believe uh, describe diligence. And that's why I'm interested in you working through that and then giving yourself a score. And there are very many. Actually, when I say 80, I'm sorry, I should have explained. I'm talking about 80% because what we have here are more than 10. I'm talking about 80%. I'm not talking about 80 out of the total of these when you give yourself 10s everywhere. So ask yourself, how are you scoring? And be concerned about how each one is. And maybe it is time for us to do some stock taking of our own life and to ask ourselves, are we doing well? Are we really diligent in what we do and how we are doing it? Now, Charles Spurgeon was a preacher, possibly known to be the best preacher of the last of the 19th century. And he talked about diligence as he was preaching. And he said, Nobody goes to heaven in his sleep. <laughs> in other words, you've got to show that your faith is working. If it's not working and you're simply sleeping, nobody goes to heaven in his sleep. And then he, go, he gave four marks of diligence. One was vigilance. In other words, seriousness of attention to the matter or task. Pay attention. Are you paying attention? Secondly, he said carefulness. And uh, Ecclesiastes 5.1 there tells us that we must not offer the sacrifice of fools, which is what imprudent haste does. Be careful. Are you careful? And it's already in that list, by the way. What about love? The diligence that you see, diligence is moved by the love for doing the right thing, for virtue, for high moral standards, that you're not going to settle for less because you have this passion, this loving passion for virtue and for high moral standards. And then for, he said, study, that a diligent person desires always to increase, is always growing. And I'll be coming back to that a little bit later. 
So what we are saying is that the, dili the diligent, that word should have been the diligent, have a sense of calling. You don't have to push them. It is something that comes out of their very character and they are ready to work hard. You give them a job uh, to work on and it's more than just an occupation or simply a source of livelihood. It's not just a matter of waiting for the salary at the end of the month. They want to make sure that that salary is paying for something. You see? Or if you're a student and you're studying, then you want to be sure that the mark you get is a mark that you have actually worked for. So diligence is a focused and persistent effort to complete a task. It takes passion, it takes commitment, it takes time, dedicated hours to reach that intended goal. In other words, success does not, it does not come to you on a silver platter. Success is something that flows out of your diligence. If you're going to perform well in anything, if you're going to be a person of high character, you better be a diligent person. A diligent student is proactive in the learning process. And a diligent student is not going to wait until they are taught. They want to pursue knowledge, to pursue truth, not just for purposes of passing. Unfortunately, we have very many students who are more concerned about passing than about being formed. And when you are diligent, you want to be formed so that when you go out, your knowledge is not simply head knowledge. So that student takes responsibility to learn and know and does not wait to be taught on the subject. Okay? So diligence is very important for you. Because diligence, first of all, in Greek, has the same root as speedy, fast, speedy, whose synonyms are eagerness or earnestness or haste to do what needs to be done. But like I said, haste is not the same as just doing, you know, just passing through it. It must be haste to excellence, to do what needs to be done. Now, friends, what we are saying is that success in anything, whether you're talking about work or you're talking about studies or you're talking about leadership, I'm sure all of us are going to look for times to work. All of that requires diligence. And without diligence, you are not going to be successful in life. If you really want to be successful, put in your effort properly. In leadership, for example, someone here says, if you are a diligent person, your mind is decisive. Your actions are intentional. That's in leadership. And a job well done is your highest priority. You are never settled with he has done the job. The question is, how has it been done? And that's what leather livestock says. Attributes of a diligent person. And I have quite a few here. First of all, diligence aims at the highest standard. It aims at the highest standard. You never settle for less. Whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. Consistently aim at the highest. You must not be content with excellence only sometimes. Be satisfied that you are consistently going for the very best. Always complete your work to the highest standard attainable. That's what excellence is all about. <clears throat> Mediocrity or lack of enthusiasm will not do for a diligent person. Diligence gives painstaking attention and is focused in all the efforts. The second attribute, diligence honors time. This is an area where many of us are so wasteful as if time doesn't matter. We've talked about time before, and I don't need to say too much. Just a couple of things to mention here. 
that a diligent person will make the most use of that time the, and in a wise way. So what we call loafing there or idleness where you just lie back and you're doing nothing is unacceptable to a diligent person. Secondly, a diligent person shuns procrastination, putting off what you must do and can do now. You don't need to put it off. Attribute number three, diligence persists through difficulties. It does not mean that <clears throat> the diligent person never meets difficulties or challenges, but diligence persists. Persistence is a very important aspect of diligence. To overcome the hardships, the challenges enthusiastically so that the task is completed. Diligence will, will do what is right and good even in the midst of difficulties. Remembering that difficulties can actually be opportunities to see another direction or to do something differently. Okay, now having looked at some of those attributes, let me now talk a little bit about what the Bible says and some of the areas that are brought out. I'm not going to read all those verses, but the very first one, and you can see them for yourself, I may just read a few of them. It says, the first one, be diligent in guarding your heart. This is an area where many fail. And I start with it intentionally. No character will ever be formed unless you pay attention to what goes into you. Be diligent in guarding your thought life your preoccupations, the company that you keep, that's what I mean by your company there. In other words, what kind of friends are around you because they are going to influence you. Remember that your heart is not a factory floor for evil where everything goes. You know, this comes and it goes, everything comes. And the wise man tells us in Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Okay? So keep your heart. The second one, be diligent in leadership. I have already made reference to that. Be diligent in leadership. Show diligence. If you, are, if you have a position of leadership, take time to be diligent in it. Josiah was a king of Judah. And the Bible tells us that Josiah worked reforms. For him, he saw his leadership as an opportunity to bring reforms. And as we can read there, Josiah took away all the abominations from the territory that belonged to the people of Israel and made all who were present in Israel to serve the Lord their God all his days they did not turn away from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. And that was because of the leader, a diligent leader. If you're a diligent leader, you will cause changes to happen. Three, be diligent in your obedience. Many of us don't want to be obedient. But as God said to Eli in 1 Samuel 2.30, 2, those who honor me, I will honor. And that's what now I'm paraphrasing here that God honors all who honor him. If you don't honor him, in other words, if you don't obey him, as it says further down there, if you faithfully obey, then you will have success. Be diligent in your obedience. Your obedience to God, your obedience to authority. Many of us don't like that, especially in an age where self-affirmation seems to be taken at the highest level. And we forget that obedience helps you to, be, to work better and to live with others well. Fourthly, be diligent in your service to God. Serve and work wholeheartedly, whether it is studying or it's work or whatever it is, be diligent in it, okay? I already talked about some of this, so I don't need to spend too, too much time on it. Number five, 
For those of you who are parents, be diligent to train your children. The Bible talks about it. Children are like your trail or your footprints. Our, we have four children, Dr. Ruth and I. And when people look at our children, they are able to see if we did a good job or we didn't do a good job. Of course, they may turn away. But I want to say to you that the children that you have become your trail in many ways. Some may go aside, they will come back if you have done a good job. And so God commanded Israel and said, you shall teach them diligently, that is the laws, to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and so forth. And I gave you some pictures here. This young girl here is, has got a piggy bank where she store, saves some little money. This little child here being trained to pray. And I can assure you, it's never too, too, it's never too early to teach them to pray. We have a child who is, we have a, grand, a grandchild, grandchildren who are under two. And as soon as they know, they at least can put their hands, mumble something, and they start praying. What about here? Teaching them to cook. So be diligent in training your children. Be diligent in growing your Christian graces. And the point here is that growth never rests. Growth never rests. If you stop growing, you die. It's just that simple. And so that's why Peter encourages us and he says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement. You have faith, supplement it with the virtue. You have virtue, supplement it with the knowledge. Knowledge, supplement it with self-control. And just keeps on growing like that. That you need to be a person who is constantly growing into the likeness of Christ. Number seven, diligently using public, be diligent in using public resources. In other words, diligence is vigilant integrity, if I can give it that definition also here. It's vigilant integrity, attentive integrity. You are trapped with something. Someone brings money or wants to do something with you. Are you attentive enough to say, hey, I'm not going to do that? And I like these two verses. I don't need to read both of them. Maybe just read the first one in 2 Kings. And this was during Josiah's work, Josiah's time, uh, especially the second one. And we are told about the workers on the temple when they were repairing the temple, that they did not ask for an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen. Why? For they dealt honestly honestly and the question is are you honest are you a person who is vigilant in your integrity that other people can trust you this man here warren buffett if i may just refer to him he's one of the richest sometimes he has been noted to be the very richest in the world but listen to a statement he makes he says in looking for people to hire look for three quality qualities three Integrity, intelligence, energy. And if they don't have the first, that is integrity, the other two will kill you. <laughs> if they have too much intelligence and too much energy, they are going to kill you. They are going to destroy the company. That's wisdom. That's wisdom from someone who has been successful, at least economically. Okay, so now let's complete by talking about the enemies of diligence. And I have four here. Some of them have already made reference to them. So I just want now to clarify a little bit. Procrastination or sloth. When you keep on saying, I'll do it, I'll do it. And you push it ahead. And quite often it's used as a lame excuse. And the question I ask, why do you put off until tomorrow what you can do today? Why do you put off until tomorrow, what you can do today. This little book, I recommend it to you. 
It's called the one minute manager when you come to, when you get an opportunity to read it by Ken Blanchard and Spencer Johnson. And essentially the thesis in that little book is that if you can do it one, in one minute, don't put it off, just do it. If it can be done in one minute, do it now. Okay? But many of us, we love procrastinating. I can't wait to sleep in. I want to catch up on my favorite TV show. And so many of us spend all our time watching the soaps on television. And we forget there's a lot more that needs to be done. Procrastination, enemy number one. Enemy number two, mediocrity. Again, I've made reference to it. Mediocrity, you know, is in so many of us. You do something and you say, oh, it will do. You read your books and you say, I think I've read it now. But you still have time. I, I think it will be okay. In other words, mediocrity desires no better, sees no better, and delivers no better. And eventually then good becomes the enemy of the best. You don't aim at the best, you aim at what is good. But the diligent work for excellence. And Sebastian here, Barbarito, he tells us that the difference between mediocrity and excellence is attention to detail, attention to detail. Enemy number two, mediocrity. Enemy number three, indolence or laziness, which gives birth usually to procrastination because a lazy person will just keep putting off. Now, friends, I want you to understand. Sleep is important, but the purpose of sleep is rest. It's not a hobby. Sleep is not a hobby. You rest, then you get up and you work. And you know, in the book of Proverbs, in the Bible, endless sleep is compared to sloth, to laziness. And listen to what he says in Proverbs 6. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. That's it. Because you're sleeping. And Jesus himself also made, made reference to that and said, while, men, while his men were sleeping, you know, the man who had planted his wheat, while men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Sleep, 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 indolence. And I'm not talking here about necessarily closing your eyes, but that indolence, that sleep, when you are unattentive, to that which you need to pay attention to. That in itself can cause you problems. And I mean, number four, the last, distraction from what is important. Usually, one of the things that distracts people is the urgent. Oh, but I must do this quickly. I must do this quickly. And then you forget that which is important, that which you need to do. Maybe you are studying and you're preparing for an examination. Someone invites you out to go and watch this very, very, you know, exciting movie. Or to go out and spend some time in a pleasure. You are distracted. And what distractions do is they rob us of our attention. They make us less alert. They make us less focused to what is important. Distractions. And what I'm saying to you is that the diligent prioritize and balance. Then they find time to focus on what is important. Do you know what is important for you to do? Say, for example, tomorrow, you're going to wake up. Do you know what you should be doing? Friends, I want to end with this quote. What we hope ever to do with ease, we must learn first to do with the diligence. Let me repeat it. What we hope ever to do with ease, in other words, what will become very easy for us to do? We must first learn to do it with the diligence. If we don't learn to do it with the diligence, then I'm afraid it will always be a stumbling block. It will always be difficult for you to do. Thank you very much.
and may God bless you. God bless you.